Hello there, welcome back to another banner review video for Near Reincarnation. So our suspicions were correct and we did indeed get surprised by a banner too related to the crossover, this time with Near Reincarnation costumes. Yuzuki and Hina are two main protagonists in Arc 2. And the first thought I have is, oh my god, do the costumes look so cool! The visual appearance of these two costume designs. Just so, so cool. I wish I had them even just for that. But let's dive in and do a review of the characters and their weapons. So first of all, Yuzuki is coming in as a top tier DPS unit. Top tier attack stat. Generous HP. Generous defense. A five hit character skill with a stupidly high multiplier that's even higher if you're wielding wind and it buffs your own attack. Now let me tell you, that design is so nice. The fact that it buffs your own attack, because in Subjugation, these days with the new Quest 5, this new season of Subjugation, it is absolutely essential to have your buff stacks last until the end of the knockdown. And if you can't cram in two Valiant's companions into your build, then you have to have someone like Christmas Akeha or Sinosaryu will do the trick. You know, th the ones that have the longer 60 second attack buff skills. And theoretically, a 45 second buff can work. However, if you're not popping it right before the skill that triggers knockdown, it's still going to wear off. And I can speak from experience. Just now was trying that. By the way, I just got my SSS plus two in a dark team. So I'm so pumped for that. Pretty much a reset for 24 hours. In any case, uh, at least I have a, a little more insight now in the, the mechanics of how to get the SSS Plus. And let me tell you, this design is it. This is awesome. So the fact that he buffs his own attack here. When you start the knockdown, he's going to have that fresh st st stack prolongation for 30 seconds. And then once again, you know, ideally you're looping it. Use it at the end. Get another refresh just in case. But that should do it. And guess what? Yes, it, it gets a, a, an extra multiplier for wielding wind, but it's still good in any elements. 330, still good. It's a five hit. And if you can get this third uh, awakening, the pursuit is also, doesn't care, you know, it doesn't care what elements. But of course he is built for wind. Tempest Drive is nice, and Vigor is par for the course for these top tier DPS units. So you really need that Pursuit to really make him just stupidly strong, but A0 could still be pretty effective. And should you pull for him, especially pull for him if you missed New Year Yuri. If you did get New Year Yuri and you're trying to save your gems, then it might be a skip for you. I'm debating myself. I think the whole banner is technically a skip for me. I think I can manage without it, but we'll talk more about that as we go along. The debris. Boon debris is always the best, but uh, 15 is not that impressive. So I wouldn't kill myself over chasing that. So those are my thoughts on Yuzuki. Top tier DPS. Pretty good in every element. Really good in wind. Awesome design with the self-buffing attack. All right, let's move forward. Take a look at his weapon. The attack stat is pretty good. We have another one of these proficient skills where you have to be a sword user to get the wind buff here. And it is a 100 for five hits, which is very nice. That's on EX level, but the other skill is not. But this is a, a valiance. This is to attack to the party. Very cool. So as a main hand, not ideal. The EX weapons are still your better DPS weapons. But, you know, if you're lacking Valiance weapons in Wind, it could serve that role on your support. Not ideal. There are better weapons out there. And in any case, a top tier sub weapon because we have Tempest Boon and Pursuit. Awesome combo of passives. Love it. Onward to Hina. Once again, such an awesome 
costume design. Oh my God. Now she's kind of following the, the lineage of Christmas Gale, Celeb F66X, it, as in uh, an elemental specific healer. Quick look at the stats here. Just absurdly high HP, very awesome. Very impressive attack for a healer. And we, again, have been seeing that. Christmas Gale, Celeb F66X. The defense stat is very high. And let's just talk about healers for a second. Obviously, Light Element has been the best element for healers for a long time. But then we got Christmas Gale, who has a gimmick that, you know, if she's wielding water, she gets the party gets the damage reduction. Then there's F66X, the new celeb F66X. If she's wielding fire, you get a debuff cleanse. And they're both very, very good. And now we have a dark specific healer. Let's take a look at this because it goes deep. Okay, so first of all, it has a four hit with 100% damage, so she's gonna maybe help with damage just a little bit and maybe help chaining. It has a 40% regen rather than the 50 that we got from Gale in F66X. It has a dark crush too. Oh my God. So we have damage support and healing, but we're not even done. We have a new unprecedented party-wide Dauntless for 20 seconds. And if you didn't catch what Dauntless uh, is when it was introduced, it's essentially a state you enter where you can't die as long as the state is active. So any hit that would have killed you, you'll remain at one HP. And that's great for Caged Vigor, but there's a little drawback if you're trying to use the Dauntless for Caged Vigor. She's a healer and it's, it's gonna heal you, right? So, application, Fate Board, Fate Board, Fate Board. This is gonna be amazing for those huge, slow load skills that come in from the boss and they just nuke you and kill you. I would pop this character skill right before that and ensure that it's not going to kill me. Or, you know, sometimes you have like a, the boss has like four skills lined up and they're just all AOEs and they're, they're just gonna nuke you, you know? This would be amazing for that. So not only can you not die, but you're gonna be healing. And because it has all of these bells and whistles, I can, I can deal with the fact that it's only 40%. Still pretty good. The other thought I had was, what about subjugation wave two? a dark team when the moose has that huge AOE nuke followed by a burn skill. And like I said, I just completed my SSS plus on dark team. And I'll tell you that to survive that reliably, I had to use an attack down companion right before it. It worked out really well. And your DPS takes the burn skill and gets down to low HP for the knockdown. So there's already a solution. And uh, I did think of this though, like, wow, what if you enter Dauntless and take those nukes without needing to use an attack down companion, you could use Valiance instead. But then again, the drawback of th there's some heals going on here. So maybe after taking that burn skill, you can still get your HP back down. If let's say you're at one HP, you heal back up to 40% and you know, but then the, the burn, you have to like have a bunch of turns go by to get the HP back down. So it possibly could work, but I haven't tried it. Obviously I don't have her and it's just an, inter an interesting thought. I'm curious if it'll work, but again, fate board all the way. Also keep in mind that, you know, we're up to 20 now and you could use her now because it's all light and dark. But, um, you know, what happens when we get 25 and 30? And it's going to get harder and harder. And are we going to wish we didn't skip Hina? You know, uh, that's that's usually the case when we have something new and it, it looks great. And, okay, maybe I can skip. but And then in a month or two or three, they introduce something and, and you wish you had it. Like, for example, when Summer F66X came out with that provoke block, it does more. But essentially, we used it to block provoking. 
But at the time, we thought, well, I don't really have trouble countering Baldy because Baldy was the only provoker. Then they introduced Griff. And then those, <laughs> the Griff back then was a pain to get around. And those that pulled Summer Wife were happy about it. And those that skipped her were kicking themselves for a little bit there. So sometimes you have to try to look to the future and predict. Okay, let's look at the rest of the kit. Flat Valiance is something we've been looking for more and more lately if you can provide your own stacks otherwise then this is great because it boosts the base and then your stacks just go on top of that. We have the new updated 50% verve, attack stats to dark weapons for the party. Awesome, and then the third passive um, HP to the party. So everything here is party wide. 100% party support, a healer that can also help boost damage for the party and a unique unprecedented gimmick of Dauntless. Awesome. But we're not done. Top tier Boon Debris, 30%. I want it! I want it! I want it! So I'm going to have to make a decision. Uh, when this dropped, I saw it and I said, okay, my account could technically skip this. So I went hard and finished this out. And ended up with A4 2B and A3 near. And that's cool, but it took me two pennies to do it. Ugh. It hurts. It hurts. So I'm really cleaned out. I would have to really wail to go for this. Last week I told you, wait another week. Wait another week. You know, we don't know what's coming, and now this is here. And if you took my advice and you waited, now you have all these options. You have two different collab banners. And I would still say skip um, Serafa. Unless... You know, you're a whale and you just want to collect everything, in, in which case, no need to take my advice. It's one more item to review here, and that's her weapon. So, the second dark healing weapon that also has a cleanse, very cool. It also has a ripper, very effective. And I would love to just bring her as my healer on a dark team with her own weapon. So, that's very cool. And then, uh, her, you know, toughness, great for herself. And then, void haste to help cool down those skills. So this is actually a great combination of passives for Fateboard. Once again, everything's kind of geared towards Fateboard there, and we have no idea how much harder those Fateboard levels are about to get in the coming months. So, yep, that leaves us only with a, a Wind-specific healer, and my guess is maybe in Summer Banner or the next Celeb Banner in August, maybe we get a Wind-specific healer to round it out. We will see. So, good luck if you're pulling. I think, you know, once again, to sum it up, we have a top-tier DPS here. Especially for Wind, and if you missed New Year Yuri, I would be very tempted to go for it. And then, again, top-tier healer with unprecedented gimmick, Dauntless. Very cool. And that... We'll conclude my thoughts for this banner. Again, good luck to you on whatever banner you choose to pull on now. I hope you see a million purples and get all of your characters to A5. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see here, throw a like in the video and a sub on the channel. It's so much appreciated and I'll see you in the next one.